The Marty's delight. We were heading toward the most exclusive brothel in Clawville. The Separatists and those opposing the monarchy hated the place, just like they hated everything that supported interracial relations and peaceful coexistence of all species. So the place wasn't just a brothel, it was a symbol. But just like a brothel is not a worthy symbol, Clawville failed to turn out the way it was intended. Welcome back to Chicken Police. Well, we are now on Chapter 2, it seems. So, um, yeah, so we're here at the Sweltering Nile. And, yeah, we better ask around for some information. Let's look around. Got the dame, dog dame. These brides are elegant. Just like Laszlo said. Lewis. What do you think could be the old rabbit's type? Fluffy tails? Furry ears? A raspy tongue? Oh, for the love of all the gods, stop it. But just think about it. Please shut up, Marty. Hmm. I I am like mostly curious, cause uh like look at that. That's the body of a woman with a friggin' tiger's head. That woman, she's familiar. Do you think it's her? The broad from the bloody New Year's? God damn it, Marty, do you have to say it out loud? It gives me goosebumps. Chicken bumps more like. Anyway, I don't know if it's really her. I always get confused by the exotic ones, but yeah, maybe. Honestly, it gives me the creeps. Yeah, me too. Hmm, okay, so maybe we'll learn more about this bloody knight. She's what I call an exotic beauty. Well, that's one way to put it. Hey, every animal is the most beautiful thing in the world to someone. Oh, damn right, Marty. Yeah, you're right. Oof, I don't know about you, but I go weak in the knees for stripes. Please, Marty, I don't want to know. And I don't care. Keep it to yourself. And let's get out of here quickly. <laughs> Can't I even talk to you anymore? You can. Ask about the weather, or how's my lower back. <laughs> Those two are even connected, if you want to know. Yeah, old fart. Yee, that guy's stare gives me the creeps. Eh, uh, I can see why. I've always told myself that birds are weird. What did you just say? Huh? What? Me? Nothing? <laughs> uh, okay, eagle fella over there. Um, what are these pictures over here? Holy fur. You swallowed so hard, the whole place shook. <laughs> are you kidding me? I've never seen anything like this before. Is this even legal? Why wouldn't it be? I don't know. Vice? You really must be joking. Vice in Clawville? Uh, okay, okay, I was pulling your leg. But still, it's a little hot in here. Well, cool down, Marty. Don't even look over there. Remember Laura, your wonderful girlfriend, whom you love more than anything. You don't need to tell me. All I'm thinking about is her. With a hatchet in her hand. <laughs> more like my nuggets. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Laura, 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 oh, Laura. Oh, poor Marty. That's it, Marty. Just slowly turn away from the pictures. Laura, 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 Laura. That's it, Marty. Okay, what I am thinking about is uh, maybe, well, r r the piece of paper that we got um, in Natasha's room, could it have, what well, could it be for one of these pictures? So I just want to check them. Wow. I, I don't even know. Good gods. Good gods indeed, Marty. Hey, keep it down, Marty. I see it now. Of all that's furry. Yes, it's very furry. Or more like, uh, shaggy. <laughs> okay. Maybe this, uh... Yeah. Don't watch... I hope no one under the age of 18 is watching this. Uh, let's talk to the fox lady. Excuse me, gentlemen. Would you be so kind as to help me? With pleasure, ma'am. The zipper always comes down on my dress. Would you kindly zip it back up? Can I, Sonny? What am I, your mother? Do what you want, for God's sake. Happy to help, ma'am. Oh, what a gallant young man. Clucking lords. Okay, come on, we can do this.
we got to keep things within this range. Boom. Oh, thank you, honey. Marty, ma'am. Marty McChicken. Thank you, darling Marty. I'm much obliged. Anytime, ma'am. Anytime. Okay. That was uh, not too bad. Okay, we've helped her. We've uh, spoken with those chaps. Uh, let us talk to the receptionist. I think she must be the receptionist. Bravo, Mr. Detective. Why do you have to be like that all the time? Well, sometimes I seriously can't decide if you've become totally stupid over the years or it just entertains you to act that way. <laughs> well, you know, that's a good question. That's exactly what I mean. All right, come on, let's speak with her. My name is Day Knight Diamond. Welcome to the sweltering Nile, gentlemen. Miss Diamond, I'm Sonny, and this is my partner, Marty. If I may, miss, you have a beautiful name and exceptionally wonderful stripes. Oh, man. Marty, He's got to think for stripes. Oh, thank you very much. Please excuse him. He doesn't visit places like this very often. Uh, me neither, uh, to be honest. Oh, nothing to worry about, gentlemen. There's a first time for everyone. You're absolutely right. We're just interested in a certain lady called Deborah. Deborah? We don't have any employees by that name right now, but if you want, any of our girls would love to be Deborah for a night. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, no. Uh, excuse me, you misunderstand. Uh, she doesn't work here. I'm afraid I don't follow. It's kind of confusing, but let me try to explain. Please, I'm at your service. I'll gladly answer any of your questions. Okay, you know that, is this going to be question mode? Any questions? Shut up, Marty. Okay, I think we are going to be going into questioning mode. We have unlocked the questioning function. Let's just quickly check here. Uh, oh, this was about the bloody New Year's Eve. Then I was changed, uh, the change of Martin Center's life forever. It started with a strange call and an unexpected visit from a tigress and ended in a hatching house where the duo had to witness an unprecedented massacre. Sonny became personally involved in the case when a strange figure in a top hat targeted his family but escaped before he could be apprehended. In truth, the case was never officially closed, but under the pressure of the Attorney General, the papers had reported that as a glorious triumph of the chicken police. This is where the legendary originates from started by an unfortunate lie. So then, why did Marty take a shot at... Uh, Sunny. Uh, pretty zebra receptionist behind the desk of the Nile. Okay. Beautiful, calm, and professional, and probably a courtesan. Okay. Let's get our questioning mode on. Um, police badge. No police badge? Yeah. I wouldn't want to offend you. Far from it, but it's evident you're from the police, even without this. Oh, is it that obvious? No, it isn't, but, you know, here in the Nile, we have a keen eye for this kind of thing. Right. I understand, ma'am. Okay, Lewis Hayworth? Do you know a gentleman named Lewis C. Hayworth? Of course I do. Mr. Hayworth is a regular guest at our establishment. I see, uh, how regular, if I may ask? I can't give you any information about that. House policy. We have that, too. It's called the law, ma'am. Mm. If you have any questions of that nature, please, come back with a warrant. Ah, touche. Okay, um, sweltering Nile? Have you been working here long, miss? Almost five years, sir. And do you like your job? Very much so. I think it's only worth doing anything if you honestly enjoy it. You hear that, Sonny? You should take that advice. I'm on it, Marty. I'm trying to get myself fired, if you haven't noticed. Yeah, and me too. Collateral damage. Okay, let's ask about the strangest names. Does this name list is. mean anything to you? This? I'm not sure. No, nothing. Don't you see some familiar names on there? I do, but everybody knows those animals. Personally, I have no contact with any of them. I see. Oh, thank you. Hmm. 
uh, strange card. Look, she gave this to us. The girl named Deborah, the one we uh, asked you about. I see. Do you know what this is? Of course. It's a membership card. Was this person a regular here? If this belonged to her, then yes. I can check for you. Please, the ladies will entertain you while you wait. I'll be right back. Uh, thank you. I'm much obliged. Okay, so... Are we just supposed to schmooze with the ladies here? Um, let's have a quick look at that there. Is there anything we can engage with now? Let's talk to the fox lady then. You gentlemen for a drink, perhaps? No, thank you. We're in a hurry. Oh. No, oh, the disappointment in Marty's face. Oh, dear. Beauty is relative. How young is this girl? Damn. This place is clucked up. Do you think they're forced to do this? Marty, we're not here for that. Just for the information we need. Yeah, but... You know what, Sonny? We're fortunate to be able to choose what we do with our lives, huh? You are, Marty. You have the chance to work with Santino Featherland. Me, on the other hand... Aha. Uh -huh. Hmm. Okay, well, while we're waiting... Can we go through here? I apologize for oh, the wait. I guess not. Please, come with me, gentlemen. So you were successful. My mistress, Madame Savas, would like to meet you. Okay. You mean that, Madame Savas? As far as I know, there's only one of her, so yes. Please, miss, take us to her. With pleasure. So who's this? Madame Savas was a legend in Clawville. Her name was known all over the wilderness. She's an avid royalist, former member of the Council of Twelve, spy master, assassin, businesswoman, and courtesan. To be honest, I didn't even know she was still alive. She's no spring chicken, that's for sure. She could also be my mother, or maybe my grandmother. First Ibn Wessler, now her. Honestly, tonight it wouldn't surprise me if His Majesty Hector III didn't grace me with his presence. Okay, so this seems to be going high up the food chain, then, is it? Uh, let's just check out. Interesting around pieces. Here. Do you think so? It's the art of my people. Uh, crocodiles? There are many kinds of crocodile in the wilderness, Mr. Featherland. This is the art of the Nylonites. Ah, hence the name, the Sweltering Nile. It's a river, Mr. Featherland. My ancestors lived by this river a long time ago. Ah, interesting. Thank you. Okay, so is this still some relation to the real world, then? I mean, if they're mentioning the Nile and things like that. Is that the time already? Have you noticed your clock's not working? How observant you are. That clock isn't meant to show the time, it's a decoration. A memento. It's beautiful. Indeed. Yeah, it's very nice. Okay, that's the clock. What else? Okay. What a painting. Congratulations, ma'am. Marty. <laughs> yes. It's beautiful indeed. It's more than 40 years old. You know, I was considered pretty then. Oh, don't say that. You still look great, ma'am. Thank you. It feels good, but no. There's no need for lies. Those days are long gone. Every age has its truth and its beauty. For me, beauty is not in the looks anymore. I agree, ma'am. Hmm. Yeah, she used to be quite the looker, huh? Uh, what else? Every kind of book? Slime and punishment? There are books here on quite a variety of topics. The death there of the horse? There are books here on quite a variety of topics. Okay, is he just gonna say that to everything? There are books here on quite a variety of topics. 49 years of the reptile. 
Uh, one key to the animal mind. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't think we're going to see anything else useful there. Uh, let's just check one more time. The eye thing now. Okay, let's uh, have a word with her. So she is the legendary Madame Zavas. Let me introduce myself properly, ma'am. Mr. Zadino, I know who you are. And I also know your partner. The legend of the chicken police is always one step ahead of the chicken police. <laughs> uh, thank you. That's flattering. Hmm. May I ask what you are looking for exactly? Here, on this night? You know, that's an interesting question. The card we've shown your lovely colleague... ...belongs to an old friend of ours, whom we haven't seen for a long time here. And the name? Unfortunately, no, Mr. Santino. That's confidential information. In my line of work, discretion is everything. Well, you know, in our line of work, the law is above everything. Oh, do you think so? I could tell you what your colleagues think is also above everything. But, as I said, discretion. Look, ma'am, we don't want to impose. We're conducting a private investigation, which started off as harmless. But now, it's murder. That sounds serious. It is serious. That's why we'd be grateful for your help. In that case, I'm at your service. Ask your questions, and I'm going to answer to the best of my knowledge. As long as you're not wading through muddy waters. Fortunately, I swim very well for a chicken. <laughs> I swim well, too. Okay, ask function unlocked. Let's get to it. What are we going to ask about first? Uh, let's ask about the sweltering Nile. This place isn't just our home with the girls. It's a sanctuary. Really? How? It symbolizes why the city was founded almost a thousand years ago. Unity. Love. Freedom. Interbreeding. That too, yes. <laughs> Do you have a problem with that? Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't. My girlfriend's a predator. Really? I'm glad to hear it. Okay, I've, I've got to ask the question now, right? Physiologically, how does it work? If you got the girlfriend who's a predator and you've got something like Marty who's a prey animal, a, a chicken, if they produce offspring, what is it? You know, is that... I mean, am I weird for wondering that? I, I don't know. Uh, let's ask about Lewis. Lewis Hayworth is a good friend of mine. It uh, surprises me that he's a regular here. You wouldn't believe our clientele. <laughs> you would be shocked. No doubt. Lewis, uh, does he come here often? Mm, not so often. Thank you for the vague answer, ma'am. The mystery is thrilling. The thrill is life itself. That was beautiful, ma'am. That was quite nice. Uh, let's ask about the strange list of names. Tell me, have you ever seen this list? I have. Am I right to assume it has something to do with the sweltering Nile? It does, yes. But I can't tell you more about it. No. Discretion is key. Absolutely. Okay, well at least she's honest with us. As I was saying, it belongs to us. Only our most valuable guests have one of these. And our employees, of course. The employees, too. Good to know. Can you tell me if this card belonged to a guest or an employee? No. I thought so. Yes, thank you. Hmm, okay, so... If that wasn't Deborah's card, then maybe Deborah got it from her killer? Do you Maybe? know Natasha Katsenko personally? Yes, I do. Tell me about her. Warm-hearted, protective, quick-tempered, fierce. Yes, fierce. Thank you. Very useful. Hmm. Well, I mean, we could have figured all that stuff out. Okay, so now it looks like we can go into full-on interrogation mode. 
Deceit is everything to Zavos. She used to be a spy, so I'm gonna take her every word with a grain of salt. Okay, who's behind the legend, Ms. Zywas? Who are you really? Uh, deceit is everything, uh, deceptive. Okay, watch out for that gauge. Who's behind the legend, Miss Zavas? Who are you, really? Just an animal raised to survive, Mr. Featherland. And because I've been taught, I know how to survive. I always was what I had to be. And you managed to dodge my question. Clever. Well, you see, this is one of the typical elements of survival. The way of dodging a delicate question and still making the questioner believe he got the answer. <laughs> but you're too cunning and experienced, aren't you? <laughs> you're not an easy one to fool. I'm trying to maintain appearances, ma'am. You should. Appearances, most of the time, are stronger and more dangerous than the truth. Okay, um, isn't it dangerous being a royalist nowadays? Tell me, were you really the king's spy? Yeah, I think this here, like, um, nice Tell and vague. Me, were you really the king's spy? Give the opportunity to deny. If that's such an open secret, then I haven't been doing my job very well, isn't that right? <laughs> yes, I was a spy. But that's such a blunt way of putting it. I Put that way, oh, it constantly. sounds rather romantic. Don't believe the cheap fiction, Mr. Featherland. Espionage is anything but romantic. I believe you, madam. If you must know, I only did it because I believed I could protect those that I serve. Weapons have only one use in this world. To keep the peace. Yes. I always thought about myself and my craft that way. Thank you for your honesty, ma'am. Uh, okay, what is this filtering Nile? Is it really just a luxury brothel? Why did you decide to open a brothel? Um, why is the identity of the card's owner so delicate, Ms. I was? Um, let's, let's keep it light. Let's not... Um, she's deceptive, she's a survivor, she's protective. She's not going to answer that question. She might answer this. We're not asking who the owner is, we're asking why it's... Oh, I don't know. Let, okay, let, let's go with this for just a moment. Why did you decide to open a brothel? I'm hoping the other question will you still know, be there. You this place used to be an orphanage. Then after the great avian plague, a hatchery. Then young mothers lived here who had nowhere else to go. That's when I took over. Young mothers and prostitutes. That feels like a sharp turn. No, it didn't happen like that, of course. The process took 20 years, but one thing remains the same. I wanted to help girls who had nothing and no one. To help them. And this was the best you could do, helping them sell their bodies. You see things very superficially, Mr. Featherland. We're a family who helped each other even at the worst of times, took care of each other, and what's most important, survived. Yes, survive, no matter the cost. And it's the cherry on top of the most treasured secrets of the rich and famous. Very insightful, Mr. Featherland. There's truth to that. Knowledge is power, as they say. And we know a lot about powerful animals that could be used as weapons. Or the opposite. <laughs> that could avert a war. Uh, if I guess who the card belongs to, will you tell me? Okay, well... If I guess who the card belongs to, will you tell me? I wouldn't say that's an acceptable price for such a secret as this, but... If you guess right, I won't lie to you. Then... I will tell you you were right. Yes. Good. Let's see. The answer to my question. Natasha Katsenko. Well, Mr. Featherland, it seems the gossip about you is right. What gave it away? It couldn't have been easier. There's a beautiful woman with a mysterious past, trying to keep it a secret, 
while someone's threatening her with the exact same thing, leaving rather unmistakable messages behind. Plus, we found the card on Deborah, who was her best friend and confidant, so she was either trying to hide it or destroy it forever, so no one could find out the truth. Am I right so far? That seems pretty insightful to Indeed, me. Indeed, Mr. Featherland. So if I'm not mistaken, Natasha used to work for you before she met Ibn Wessler. He fell in love with her, gave her a job at the Millions Club. The rest is history. That makes you sense. You have talent, Mr. Featherland. I'm really sorry you're not working for the government. I am working for the government. I'm a cop. Are you sure, Mr. Featherland? Oh, what kind of a question Touché. is that? Indeed. Natasha used to work here. We can put it that way, but you know, this isn't just a workplace. She also lived here. She was part of our family. And we still love her very much. Right. That puts everything in a different light. Save Us is a true survivor, always was. And she's proud of that, even to this day. Maybe I can get her to trust me if I play to this part of her. Uh, why did you take her in? Maybe you saw yourself in Natasha. Uh, everyone in the city thinks you're dangerous. Why is that? You tried to shape her into your image. You tried to protect her from what? Uh... Why did you take her? We want to know why... We know why she took her in, because that's what she said this whole establishment is about. Maybe everyone in the city thinks you're dangerous. Why is that? That would be... good. Uh, you tried to shape her into your own image. I don't think that... Okay, I don't think it's this one. And this one seems... You'd you tried to protect her. From... Okay, let's, let's go with this here. You tried to protect her. It's all about family. From she's, what? She's going to answer about protection, right? Natasha came to me penniless, cold to the bone, and wounded. She was only 17 years old. Even if she were my enemy, I would have taken her in until she recovered. Yes, I'm like that. I was raised to be like that. Haven't you seen any opportunities for profit? Or were you guided by pure animal goodness? Is that so hard for you to believe? I think that uh, worldly women like you try to turn every position to their advantage. I hope I don't offend you. On the contrary. <laughs> but no. I didn't see any opportunities in a girl who could barely speak our language, who was starving and wounded and obviously running from something. In fact, I was taking unnecessary risks because of her. Oh? Um, your stone cold image is just a mask, isn't it? You knew you were taking a risk, yet you still took her in? Why? You're capable of anything to keep secrets hidden, am I right? Uh, I think maybe this here? You knew you were taking a risk, yet you still took her in. Why? I don't know, Mr. Featherland. These things can't always be rationally explained. Not even when I've lived my whole life based on reason, on logic, almost every step calculated. So Natasha came and turned your whole life upside down. She's like that, isn't she? It's in her nature, yes. Poor thing can't help it. She's like a tornado. She usually takes everything with her. That's quite an apt metaphor. But I have to agree. <laughs> Did she sweep you away, too? I don't know yet, madam. I'm clinging firmly to the ground. Do you know where Natasha came from before Clawville? Do you know where Natasha came from before Clawville? Naturally. The poor dear couldn't even deny it. Even her name's eloquent, her accent, but mostly her manners, Mr. Featherland. She's from Stovos. And she belonged to the upper class of Stavonian social circles. She could barely even speak the language when I first met her. That's all you know about her. An ex-spy like you must have checked up on her new protege's past. That's the most exciting thing. Yes, I have. Multiple times putting my most treasured connections to good use. 
but nobody found anything. Natasha's trail could only be traced back to this Dovonian border. What happened in that country, no one knows. Okay, that's interesting. It's rather curious, don't you think? It is, Mr. Featherland, yes, curious. That's why I've always been rather fond of Natasha. And it's not like Natasha would Did ever tell anyone, is it? Did deeply when she left you? Indeed, <laughs> it did. Zavos is protective. It seems she's dedicating her whole life to her protégés. If I concentrate on that, maybe she'll open up to me. Uh, have you kept in touch? Why did you let her? Le Why did you let her leave with Wesler? Did it occur to you that you could exploit Natasha and Eben's relationship? Um. Why would... I don't know about this. Have you kept in touch, maybe? Why did you let her leave with Wesler? Hmm. With her protégés. Concentrate on the protégés. Uh, have you kept in touch? Yeah, why did you ever let her leave with Wesler? Why did you let her leave with Wesler? What else could I have done? Wesler is a handsome, rich, powerful animal, and Natasha fell in love with him. If anything, I know you can't stand in the way of a woman in love. There's nothing more dangerous, Mr. Featherland. I've been in this job for more than 20 years, but I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> You see, you learn something new every day if you have an open mind. <laughs> yes. Oh god, we lost points for that. Crud. Okay, um, when was the last time you saw her? Uh, were you angry at her for leaving? When was the last time you saw her? Let's when was friendly. the last time you saw her, Madame Zavas? Maybe around two months ago. There was a ball attended by Ibn Wessler. His beautiful mate Natasha, and myself. Yes. Was she herself? Did you feel like she was afraid or worried about something? On the contrary, she was unrestrained, free, radiant. She was in love. Yes, in her own unique way. What do you mean? You know Natasha loves on a different level than most Clawville women. Or most women in the wilderness, in fact. Maybe it's because of these Stovonian origins. Perhaps it's something else. So you didn't notice anything strange about her? Well, if anything could be called strange, it was that I saw a woman positively floating above the ground, who previously used to stand on it with two feet. I see. Thank you, madam. Okay, how do you feel when you learned Natasha was going to leave? How did you feel when you learned Natasha was going to leave? Honestly, I was very hurt. I loved her as a daughter. How would you have felt? I couldn't say. And I still couldn't stop her, and you know why? Of course I do, because you loved her. You've been in my shoes before, am I right, Detective? Yes. This isn't about me, madam. Please stop changing the subject. I have felt betrayed on a certain level. Yes, and offended, and alone. Even amongst all my friends. Were you disappointed in her? Only in myself, Mr. Featherland. But I have a hunch you know this feeling very well. Yes, you're right. Well, thank you for your time, madam. Anytime, detective. Yes. Anytime. Okay, how do we do? Oh, wow. We got a 90% accuracy. True detective. Sweet. We got a Matthew McGonaghy. Uh, final thoughts. The legendary chicken police back in action. Still a bit weary, but untarnished. Good work. Natasha worked at the sweltering Nile brothel before even Wesley discovered her and got her out of there. Okay. Sweet, that's not bad. Finally, we're getting somewhere. Please, gentlemen, wait here a moment. 
I would like to show you something that could help you. Okay. Oh, that's excellent news. Thank you. We will wait. Do you trust her? Not in the slightest. Even her smile is fake. This woman wallowed in other animals' secrets until she became one, too. That's exactly how I feel. Anyway, now that we're here, we can take a better look around. Just what I was thinking. Okay, what is there for us to see that we haven't already seen just yet? We've seen that. Uh, maybe we can look at the books. These books are here for a reason. They mean something. Uh, slime and Punishment 7. These books are here for a reason. They mean well, something. Well, they mean something. Okay, what does it say? Uh, slime and Punishment 7, Pieces of My Mind, The Death of the Horse, 49 Years of the Reptile, One Key to the Animal Mind. These books are here for a reason. They mean something. Uh... Are these numbers? Seven... Forty-nine... One... Seven, forty-nine, one? Does that mean something? Uh... Yes. This is the Zevas from the legends. Beautiful and deadly. Okay, nothing behind the picture. Beautiful pieces for sure. They must be worth a fortune. Anything about the artifact? Oh, oh, we can change the time. All right, let's, let's try it. Uh, what was it? Seven. No, wait. 7.49, is that it? Let's try that. Did that do something? Oh! A hidden door. Who'd have thought? She is a legendary ex-spy. Well, this is something I've never understood. Why isn't a key good enough? I mean, you can take that with you, but riddles can be solved by anyone. I don't think many animals get to be in this room, Marty. And the other thing is, maybe she wanted us to find it. Exactly what I'm thinking. Who knows? Anyway, we're going in. All right, guys, let's go check it out. This room is not like her at all. The other must have been for show. Marty, this is the reality. We're talking about a professional spy. A former spy. Still, if anyone knows how to mask a real face, it's her. Well, you think this is who she really is? Cold, dark, and tiny. And full of secrets. Okay, well, let's have a look around. Uh, ladies of the Force. So the rumors are true. Military intelligence. This dame's really something. I'm starting to think the whole brothel is just a cover. Uh, makes sense. You think she's still working for Royal Intelligence? Well, based on what she told us, she's a committed royalist. So I imagine she does. Interesting. Fox Hector King? Hector III, our great and fair king. I feel sorry for the poor fox, to be honest. I don't. He has it pretty good. Would you like to live your life as a puppet? Everything you do, carefully planned. Your rule and authority, the whole thing, just for show. Even if he is just a puppet, Clawville needs a king. He gives strength and hope to many animals. Huh. <laughs> I guess. Okay, so they've got a puppet regime thing going on in this country. That is interesting to know. Uh, anything on the walls? Ugh, this place gives me the creeps. Me too. We better get out of here before she comes back. Okay, typewriter. Unfinished letter. Somebody started typing a letter but left it unfinished. What does it say? Number 29472222. Report about separatist group movements. Damn it. Don't even read that. What? Why not? I don't know about you, but I don't want to get caught up in the royalist separatist conflict. What you don't know can't hurt you, right? 
Uh, I can't even recognize you, boss. Where did you put your sense of adventure? My sense of adventure has retired. Leave it alone. Yeah, come on, Marty. He doesn't have long until he's uh, approaching retirement. Uh, code definition, moon, deliver, parrot, grass, shining, angel wing, six. Agent, Ag angel, Colomar. Okay. Uh, draws. Uh, names, numbers, dates. Oh, furry gods. Do you think they all belong to the brothel? Hell no. Half of it is a matter of national security. What did we step into? You know what? I don't care, Marty. I'm too old for conspiracies. The only thing that matters to me is to find out what the furry hell we're doing here. And what it has to do with Natasha. Sure. Well, let's get to the bottom of it, Marty. Um, let's look at the strange book. This has got to be it, Marty. Look at the missing page. Oh, gods. And look at the names. Yeah, the ladies and their guests. Damn. What this means, Marty, is that the most influential people in the city had been Natasha's patrons. Some even from the royal family. This book could destabilize Clawville. At least the Clawville we currently know. You think this is behind everything? Somebody's blackmailing Natasha because of this? That could easily be the case. But something still doesn't fit. That piece of a painting. Sonny? If there's even a small chance of... Sonny. What? There's another familiar name here. What are you talking about? What name? Uh, Bella Sandy Sons, Amelia. Molly Stalling? What? Clucking hell, Sonny. Molly? She was working here too. Uh, it's probably someone else with the same name. So that's why Natasha told me they'd known each other for a long time. Damn. Look, boss. I can't believe it. All those stories about her past. Listen, Boss Bird, Molly loved you, right? Isn't that what matters? Marty, please shut your fucking beak right now or I'll shut it for you. Okay, Boss, I'm sorry, but... Just shut the cluck up. We've caught them sneaking around, Miss Diamond, uh -oh. you see? I see, madam. Uh-oh. Oh, back off, ladies. There's no need for this. We don't want trouble. No, maybe you don't. Unfortunately, trouble has found you, gentlemen. Madam Zavos, we needed to know the connection. What this place has to do with Natasha. And... And? And my wife. Filthy cops? He's talking gibberish. May I shoot him? God damn it, Diamond. No, not yet, Miss Diamond. I'd be very sorry to put holes in your lovely striped skin, but believe me, baby, I will. I've always wanted to know if diamonds are bulletproof. Please, madam. It'll all be over in a second. No. We have received different orders, Miss Diamond. Stand down. Oh, I see. The pony does tricks on command. Well, I'm not surprised. That's enough, Marty. You knew who she was, didn't you? What she meant to me. Well, well, Mr. Featherland. Aren't you interested in your case anymore? No? All it took was a name from your past, and your professionalism drowned in the mud. God damn it. Stop playing games with me, Zavos. What does all this have to do with Molly? Yeah. Nothing at all. No, she was just a little bird among the many who sought refuge here. You forced her into this. You'd love to hear that, but until she met you, she was one of us. Just another... You clucking... Sonny, no! Oh! Sonny! Uh-oh. I think I was dreaming. But it wasn't the kind of dream you'd want to remember. Dark and painful. 
Then the suffocating smoke woke me. It wasn't fried eggs, that's for sure. Where was I? What happened? That treacherous crocodile. Then I saw Marty, who looked as horrible as I felt. Well, I've always wanted a romantic sea voyage. God damn it, I knew I shouldn't have gone along with this. Marty, I told you you could get out any time. <laughs> and you knew damn well that I wouldn't. That I would never leave you in deep shit once I've joined you. You knew it, and you still asked me to do it. Marty, listen. You're a selfish bastard, Sonny. And you drag everyone around you down with you. 121. Oh. But you just couldn't sit still on your ass, could you? Well, take a good look around, boss bird. This is you. And this is what follows you. Just this clucking misery and dead bodies. Do you understand? You have nothing else to offer but suffering. <sighs> Marty. And feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, you're great at that. I can't believe this shit. We're gonna die here on a god's damn blazing ship like gross chicken. Well, it's dramatic at least, just like you like it. Marty. What? I've almost managed to untie the knot. But if you keep thrashing around like that, we're really gonna die here. Ah, oh, for cluck's sake. Fine, work your magic. Until then, I'm gonna say all the prayers I know. You better. Okay, how do we... Uh, start? Is this what we have to do? Oh, crud. Is this right? Oh, God. Am I doing this right? Uh, come on, come on. Oh no! Okay. God damn it, come on! Like so. Like so. Like so. Like so. Okay, try and stay within the lines. I think we might be doing this. Boom! So what now? Now we run and swim. I can't swim. Well, you better learn fast or you'll die. I'm not gonna drag your fat ass to the shore if that's what you're hoping. Well, I shouldn't have brought this many guns with me. <laughs> Throw them away then. Never. <laughs> then they'll drag you down into the deep. Ah, I don't care. I always thought your gun mania would be your undoing. Cluck you, Sonny. We have to survive this first. Well, after you, boss bird. <laughs> that furry fucking clucking gods damn yeah listen marty what what you said on the ship what what about it you were right i knew this would happen or something like it i dragged you into this deliberately because i'm not enough on my own sonny cut the crap no i'm serious i knew i couldn't do this alone i needed you to well, to look out for me. Oh, I don't need this, all right? Stop playing the wounded soul. I don't fucking care. Fair enough. Hell yeah, I'm fucking right. I'll, uh, shut up now. Good. Okay. Wow, that was something. Uh, you is know, it sunken ship? I have a feeling this night's just getting started. We were almost finished. Yeah. You don't want to quit, do you? No, Sonny, I don't. Thanks, partner. Yeah. Wow, okay. Well, we got out of there. Okay then, guys, I think we're going to take a quick break here. When we get back, we are going to gather our thoughts and think about everything that's happened. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching.
and I'll see you guys next time.